Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite alien slash monster romances of 2023. I do make a separate video for my 2023 favorites for my like more paranormal sci-fi monster reads. All my other ones, like my historical and my contemporary dark modern day and historical romances are going to be in a video that's going to be coming out in like two days i'm pretty sure for y'all but i do separate them because i do know my audience and some people love all the sci-fi alien stuff and some people don't so i'm going to separate them i did this last year as well and i thought it was a great idea and y'all seem to really like it so these are my top 10 favorite alien or monster romance books of 2023. There's no particular order except for this, probably the first two. The first two are my favorite. So first is Broken by the Horde King by Zoe Draven. I love this book so much. This is book four in the Horde Kings of Dakar series. I buddy read this book with Victoria over at Victoria's Romance Reads. We've been buddy reading. We read this, the rest of the series. I think we both read like books one and book two on our own. And then we buddy read all the other ones together. And it was so fun. I totally recommend buddy reading the series to somebody. It was fantastic. Victoria and I, we need to pick another Alien Romance series to buddy read, please. Um, but this one was so good. Like fan freaking tastic. All these books take place on a planet called Dakar. These people remind me so much of the Dothraki people from Game of Thrones. So the Dakar are inhabitants of the planet. They're natives to the planet and human settlers have come seek refuge, find somewhere else to live. I don't think Earth is habitable anymore or there's overpopulation. So you have to kind of like expand and find new places to live. So they generously allow human settlements on their planet. However, they have certain rules in place. You read about more of that in like book one. So our heroine here is a human woman. However, she's the only human in a village of aliens. So also I want to say the Dakari people are yes, very similar to the Dothraki in Game of Thrones, like very barbarian-esque, but they don't have a lot of those alien qualities that intimidate a lot of readers if they're not familiar with alien romance. These books read like fantasy books. Like they are fantasy books. They just take place on a different planet. And like the differences are like, he's got gold colored eyes and he's kind of like got gold skin and a tail. And that's like basically the only physical difference between them and humans. So if you want to dip your toe into alien romance, oh my gosh, read these, especially if you love fantasy romance books. Anyway, so back to the summary. So the heroine of this book, she is a human, um, but she lives in an alien village because when she was a baby, one of the soldiers who was patrolling their village ended up finding her as baby like abandoned in the woods. And so he adopts her into his family. So her family are Dakari people. She gets made fun of a lot when she's a child by the other children in the village. Uh, but then our hero here, he's kind of like the prince of the village essentially. Um, he is set to become a horde king when he gets older, um, but he defends her and they become like very close friends. It kind of like jumps in time, you see them growing up a little bit. So when they're both of age, the heroine admits her feelings to the hero and he very publicly rejects her. And who she is so hurt by this. And he kind of goes off to train to become a Horde King and they have not seen each other in like 10 years. And some other things have happened since that point where the heroine is thinking that it's not possible to forgive him, to make him like come back into her life, to want him to come back into her life, but then he does. He shows up in the village and is like, I'm gonna beg on hands and knees to make you come with me and be in my horde, in my village with me. If you love childhood friends to not necessarily enemies, but kind of enemies, like they, they have not seen each other in 10 years um, and like, or kind of like a rejected mate trope as well. Like this one is so stinking good, it deals with so many fantastic topics. I loved our heroine. I loved seeing her confidence just shine and grow. She's a healer. And so you get to see her growing with becoming like a healer in her own way, um, especially when a lot of the Dakari people do not trust her because she's human, but she's an amazing healer. Uh, and then the hero, I love the groveling. I love the lengths he will take to get his woman. Like, it's so good. I totally recommend it. And technically you can read this book as a standalone. However, I recommend reading them in order because there are some 
there's some terminology or some background information you might not know if you don't read the other ones before this. Probably my other top favorite <laughs> is Taken to Nobu by Elizabeth Stevens. This is book two in these Very Mate series. I read book one, book two, and book three all this year. Um, I buddy read them with Tiffany and oh my gosh, another series to like buddy read with somebody. It's so much fun. We need to read the rest of the books in the series next year for sure. Um, but number one was like kind of like an honorable mention on here because it was a great start to this series, but Taken to Nobu just knocks it out of the park. I tried to keep one book per author on this list, try to being the operative word here. Um, so <laughs> number one could have been on here as well, but I tried to give other authors a fair shot, you know. Um, so Taken to Nobu, you meet Kiki, the heroine in here, in book one. In book one, you get to read about her experiencing the trauma that humans have experienced on this moon that is orbiting this planet called Varaxia. These human women end up getting rescued, but Kiki is one of those individuals that have already experienced a lot of trauma to a point now where she she doesn't speak anymore. She has not spoken in a year. She doesn't speak at all. Um, and at the at the beginning of book number one, she goes into cryo sleep because she gets heavily injured. And before she gets injured, her fate and mate notices her and is like, that's my fate and mate. And he is a prince of the planet Nobu, which is an ice planet. So it definitely gave me like IPB vibes for sure. Cause it takes place with like snow and an ice planet and stuff like that. So um, anyway, he notices her but then she has to go into cryo sleep because she needs to be healed from her injuries and it takes a long time. Um, and so he ends up transporting her to the planet with him, kind of like taking her and she wakes up. This book starts out with her waking up from cryo sleep, not knowing what's going on and being thrust into this mating ritual on this planet where they have to try and escape the men that are pursuing them. Like it's like a mating ritual of sorts. Like the women who are participating all want to be captured, but um, you become more revered the longer it takes for your mate to find you. The heroine of this book has only ever known trauma and assault from an alien man before. And she's like, I am not actually letting like a man touch me, get me, no. And so she goes to great lengths to try and run away from these men finding her. One of the men in this ritual is her fated mate. Little does she know that though. So it is so good. Like it's beautiful. Also, so Elizabeth Stevens did commission character art for like all the books I think in this series so this is the one for this book and it absolutely beautifully encapsulates these two characters and what I pictured in my head like they're absolutely stunning beautiful I cannot talk about this book highly enough and I do recommend again reading book one this is only book two though so you only have to read one book before this one but um this series is absolutely fantastic Elizabeth Stevens is a beautiful writer absolutely stunning I need to read more of her books I know she's written some books that are not alien romances so I need to dip my toe into those as well but this book is so fantastic there's obviously trigger warnings for past assault PTSD when it comes to SA uh, sexual assault so um please be aware of that before picking this up I read quite a few Honey Phillips books this year Honey Phillips is such a fun alien romance author like if I need something to just pick me up, I pick up a Honey Phillips book. I've read so many of them. I've read a lot of the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers books this past year, but my favorite book in that series is Frantor, which is the second to last one. This whole series takes place on a planet that is covered in snow, um, but there are also human settlers that kind of all essentially kind of almost live like Amish people. They want to get back to their roots and like, like human settlers were. Um, on earth. So there's obviously a human village, but then there's also a ranch like a few miles away from the human village that was just recently purchased by seven alien brother in arms. Um, they all fought in war together and they consider themselves like family and they're all staying on this ranch together. Um, in book one, Artek, the heroine of that story, she ends up getting pursued by like the general, the leader of the Band of Brothers. And um, when <laughs> she's getting pursued, she ends up telling all the brothers this tale about um, these men who would go and kidnap women from a neighboring village and like be their wives. So basically like telling the story of seven brides for seven brothers, essentially. Um, and the uh, heroes, a few of them are like, oh my gosh, that's how you find a wife? Like, let's go do it. And so in the middle of the night, they go steal women. They don't really think anything like bad of it. They're like, oh, this is how you find a wife. Like, like she told us this, so we're gonna find a wife. <laughs> so Flory, the heroine of this book was one of the women who was kidnapped in her sleep. She owns kind of like the restaurant in town. Um, She loves cooking, loves baking. And Fran Tor is the reclusive brother of the bunch. She experienced quite a lot of trauma and um, injuries due to war. And so he has a few cybernetic limbs um, and some scars. And Benjar, one of the brothers who kidnapped all the women, ended up placing Flory on his doorstep. 
during a snowstorm and so she can't leave. He has to help take care of her, but also keep to the shadows because he thinks that if Fleury sees him, she's gonna be terrified of him because of the way that he looks. Um, so they kind of fall in love with each other without seeing each other because she kind of like stays upstairs in like a loft area. He tells her like, oh, you cannot come down and he stays in the lower area and they talk through the ceiling and the floor or um, like, Flora sometimes wears a cover over her face to make him comfortable, um, but she like will cook for him. And there's at one point where he's having horrible chronic pain due to all his injuries, injuries and she literally gives him a massage and melting in a puddle. But this one was so sweet. It's definitely my favorite one in the series. If you want a sweet romance, if you want funny, sweet, like not too serious alien romances, I definitely recommend the series as a whole. For my Ruby Dixon pick this year, I have a worse guy. This was the renegade romance like exclusive edition look at how stunning it is and our heroine b is on the back with like food that she's gonna that she made and is gonna give him this is the second book in what's it called sorry i don't know the title of this series name um villains in love the villains in love series um so essentially each book in this series there's two out this is the second book are about clones of a man called Cruelty in the Ru Ruiner. He's not a man. He's this alien gladiator guy who like is notoriously known for like ripping apart his competitors and like being very brutal and like dangerous. Okay, so they ended up like someone ended up creating clones of him. And this is these books in the series are romances of the clones like the clones are like almost nothing like Cruelty. They look exactly like him. People mistake them or cruelden in and treat them as such. And like, you kind of can look pretty scary, right? <laughs> um, but they're not the same person. They're completely different. So the Cruelden clone of this story has been taken to the planet Rizda 3, which is a planet notoriously known in Rubyverse. If you don't know, it's a planet where a lot of human refugees go. And that's where B is. B is a human settler on the planet Rizda 3. And um, before she was taken, um, and abducted from earth she was a social worker of sorts and she's really finding it hard to find something motivating to do in her new life she can't ever go back to earth and she's like i need to find something i'm passionate about on this planet she hasn't really found anything yet a lot of human women have farmed or are growing crops and stuff she's like that's not really my vibe i don't really know what to do and then she hears about cruelden's situation cruelden has been sent to the planet rista 3 in hopes of acclimating him to society and B sees this as the perfect opportunity to be like how about I get to know Cruelton and help him reacclimate in there and I think that'll be a great thing for me maybe help aliens and other people who have been taken or abused or whatever the case may be like acclimate into society and just help them so that's her goal she tries to befriend Cruelton's clone here and it is really good he's like in a cage right here and then the back is her like through the glass and stuff she makes him like cute little meals and stuff to to welcome him and stuff like that and it's so good one that had me laughing my butt off is that time i got drunk and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf by kimberly lemming i read quite a few kimberly lemming books i think i read all of her mead mishap series this year but i think this one was my favorite it made me laugh like the most it was so fun the heroine in here brie um is a human woman and she's being hit on one night very heavily from a man at a bar and she's like not having it she's like i'm not interested dude he's like here just just drink the drink i bought you um she's like no like i'm good and it comes to a point where she's like fed up like she said no too many times she ends up taking the drink and throwing it in his face he kind of ducks out of the way and it hits this werewolf instead and from the moment that he locks eyes with brie he's like that's my fate of me i know that's my fate of me but she thinks it's the love potion talking so the guy who was hitting on her ended up drugging the drink wanting to drug her with a love potion she finds out after she like threw the drink at the hero though and she's like oh no it's just the love potion talking like i don't think we're fated mates like i don't want to rope you into that and like us develop feelings for each other when you're gonna like it's gonna wear off you know what i mean um but he's very adamant he's like nope i can like feel the effects of the love potion but it's nothing compared to like the fated mate bond that's already started and he's like worming his way into her life in every way possible like he basically moves in with her day one like changes her name on the mailbox to say like his last name because he's gonna have them be married and stuff it is so funny it is so cute there's more stuff in this as well but if you want like a funny fantasy romance series that like has like monsterish creature shifter elements in it like 
this one is very good. Mantras and Minotaurs by Ashley Bennett came out this year and it was so sweet. So this is book number three in the Leviathan Fitness series, which are monster romance books that can like just take place in our world, but monsters also live like in society with us, like normal. So the first book in the series is about Tegan and her romance with Atlas, who's like a wolf creature. And then the second book is about um, Tegan's brother and like his romance with a kraken creature. And this is their mom's story. So it's like older couple and these two end up matching on a dating app and they first start out at long distance. And then like, they're trying to figure out long distance between the two. Like it was so sweet. It's definitely unique because you don't really read about older couples in romances, especially a mom who's like children are grown and getting married. Like she's trying to find who she is as a person after her husband has died and her husband was very controlling and a little bit abusive at times. And so she's trying to find out who she is as an individual by herself. Um, but then she ends up matching with this guy on this dating app and um, like this Minotaur man. And ooh, it's so cute. They're so sweet. So yeah, I definitely recommend this one. If you want like sweet monster romances, like these books are definitely cute and sweet, but they're also very hot at the same time. So definitely fits my cute but hot category that I have on my channel. So. If you want both, this series is good. If you want a demon romance, I have Sweet Vengeance by Viano Onimo. So here in the story, she has been assaulted in the worst way possible by a man at work and she wants revenge. So she ends up summoning a demon to help her get revenge on the man who assaulted her. His name is Malachi. And from the moment that he meets our heroine, when she is summoned, like who he is like smitten like a kitten, he, is obsessed with her, loves and thrives off of the vengeance that she has. She doesn't want to just do this one act of revenge and be done with it. You know, she doesn't want to just kill this man. She wants to make him go insane for what he did to her. Malachi helps her with that and they end up falling for each other in the process. Um, the heroine is so bad A, I absolutely love her and the lengths that she goes to to like absolutely ruin this man's life, like go off. Yes, a shorter one that was such a fun read that was so hot and like unique for sure is Lady Venom Takes a Mistress by Cat Blackthorn. This is a sapphic um, kind of like demoness romance. So the human heroine of the story has been outcast from her village and um, she finds refuge in like this gothic mansion or castle nearby. And she's been told her entire life, like, don't go near that castle. That's where um, Lady Venom lives and you will die if you come in contact with Lady Venom but she needs to find refuge somehow. Um, so uh, there she meets Lady Venom and she ends up protecting her and her many snakes, like she's a snake demoness, like, and um, she basically, a lady, lady, lady Venom makes this heroine um, her mistress and is gonna teach her the ins and outs of certain things when it comes to a relationship, if you know what I mean. Um, and whew, this book is hot. It is so hot and it is so unique and cool. I've never read about like a like a creature like Lady Venom. Like I loved her. And also like a cute little tidbit I wanna add is like um, the heroine when she like moves into the castle, um, she doesn't have like anything except the clothes off of her back. The room that she moves into has like a wardrobe full of dresses that Lady Venom like made herself. So you have this like, like this gothic looking like bad A demoness woman who like, is so confident in herself and like for fun, she loves to make these cute, frilly, like beautiful, stunning, sparkly dresses. Like I love that. I read To Ravish a Rogue earlier this year for the novellathon, like the Halloween version that we had. And this was so fun. It's like my favorite CM Costa book for sure. And it's historical monster. So um, it takes place in like a historical setting, like deals with pirates in a historical setting. So here another story, she, we don't know what she is, but she's like a monster creature of some sort. And she needs to go find her sister. Her sister's in trouble. And so she needs to sneak onto a ship for passage to go get to her sister. She ends up disguising herself as a cabin boy, um, pretending to be a cabin boy on this ship. But the hero who's the captain, can tell exactly right from the moment that he like lays eyes on her, like, oh, that's a woman. Like, mm -mm, she's not gonna fool me. And so he ends up like trying to see how far he can take it for her to finally admit that she's a woman. <laughs> like he wants this cabin boy to do certain things that um will, <laughs> that'll like push her buttons, like gonna push her buttons. Cause she doesn't know that he knows that that's a woman. And he is so, 
into her, like so into her. And uh, yeah, he's like this like snake sea creature, which is really cool. So that's like the his monster aspect. They're both monster creatures. There's a lot of monster creatures in this book and I can't wait for Sam Nascosta to like write more in this series. I need more. I need more. I asked her if she was gonna write another pirate one. She said maybe someday it's gonna happen. So I'm very excited. I love pirate romances. This gave me like Pirates of the Caribbean vibes, but also monsters. So, so amazing. Like it was so good. The audiobook for this, Fantastic. Loved it. And if you know me, I have to round out this video with a Layla Fay book. Layla Fay is my ride or die, bizarre monster romance author. Okay, so one that's probably my favorite from this year is her most recent release that came out in December. This is Wed to Jack Frost. And oh, it's so cute. Um, I read a few books in this Wed to series. So some authors, monster romance authors have collaborated to write in this series where monsters will be matched to the best genetic human match um, for like the best offspring, your fate of mate, whatever the case may be. And this is about them like getting married. So the heroine of this story, she's not living the best life. Her and her mother are in poverty right now. And she's like, the best way I can survive is to offer myself up as a bride at this company so they can match make me to somebody. And it just happens to be Jack Frost, who is uh, one of these like frost creatures. And um, at first he's like, oh no, I'm not gonna get married. I think he ended up like submitting his DNA and stuff like that as like a dare one night when he was like wasted. <laughs> I mean, he's like, oh, I never really expected to have a wife. I think I'm too young. Um, Cause his monster creature can like be like thousands of years old and he's like 150 or something. And he's like, I'm too young to have a wife. Um, but then his mother is like scolding him like, go, go. Like you need a wife, go. And so he's just gonna go to the center to like basically explain like, oh, like I'm not actually gonna get married. When the heroine of the story is like, like ride or die needing this opportunity to have a better life. And from the moment that they see each other, she's like berating him because he's late to their wedding and they've never met before. She's like, how can you be late? I've been waiting here for hours. And he's like stunned by her beauty at first, but then he's also very turned on by being scolded by this woman. So that's all I'm gonna leave you with. It was so fun. I really enjoy the books in this series by Leila Faye. Like they are fun, fun, quick reads. Anyway, so you have which those are my favorite monster, alien, paranormal romances of 2023. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and let me know your favorites in this type of genre. Stay tuned for um, in the next few days when I come out with like my contemporary, like historical ones in my favorites of 2023 video, my next one. So thank y'all so, so much for watching. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any monster related emoji in the comment section down below. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.